All right, so we've got a steel manufacturer, and they need to know how much, uh, how much, what their sales are going to be in the next year, and that's a common problem. I think most businesses face that, and you know, it's necessary for a few reasons. One, you know, you don't want to make this company doesn't want to make too much steel because, and then it's just sitting around. Um, they've got to store it. They don't want to make too few because then they can't meet market demand, and they've got a lot of bad customers, and they got to worry about keeping their market share and all that kind of stuff. So it's important, but it's also important for planning and how many people hire. Um, staffing, um, how much raw materials to acquire, and also setting expectations for investors. I mean, it's, it's very important. So, uh, again, we're in this use case, we're going to forecast sales for a small steel manufacturer. Okay, we're going to use historical data from the firm, okay, how much they sold historically over time, uh, aggregated or uh, accumulated at a monthly level. And then we're going to uh, use external data to kind of augment uh, their data. And the data that we're going to be using in this case comes from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. All right, any questions? All right, so let's move into, let me open up my stream here. All right, my data in this case is just in spreadsheets. And um, I've got three different files I'm bringing in. Um, and I'm merging those together by a uh, year and a month because this is monthly data. And I'm going to build a very sophisticated time series model here right in front of your eyes. All right, so there's three fields in here. This is the raw steel production for the United States. So this is how much steel was produced in the United States during this month, January 1972. Uh, this is how much uh, the level of industrial production for the United States. So you can think of the steel that's being made um, by steel manufacturers be used as components in this industrial production. So it's almost like a component. This would be a component, you know, a, a precursor to that. Um, and then the third field would be how much sales are above a steel manufacturing plant. And this, again, would be a subset of this, right? So, um, you know, this would be some fraction of this right here, right? Because they have, they don't have the whole, this is everybody in the United States, this is both. All right, so uh, let me, the first thing, the first step in building a predictive model is defining your predictees and your predictors. So inside uh, a type node, we can go in and we can tell Modeler um, what we want to use as inputs and targets, our predictees and predictors, our dependent variables and independent variables. In this case, we want to use raw steel production for the United States, industrial production for the United States as inputs. These are what we're trying to use as, as to predict sales for Bubba. So Bubba's manufacturing would be our target. This is what we're trying to predict. All right. So to, we're going to use the uh, auto, one of the auto modeler features, a time series auto model, and this is time dependent data, which just means it's one series collected over time, as opposed to something that's collected in one time period. This is collected, you know, over time, so it's time series data. Are you familiar with that term? All right, so we'll take this time series and we'll drag it onto the screen. This is the time series node. We'll hook it up to our type node, and we hit go. And what modeler's doing? Oh wait. Um, I have to tell Modeler a few other things. One, I have to tell it uh, what date, what my date field is, and what that date is measured in. In this case, the date field is called date, and the time interval is months. And the reason I have to do this is because Modeler has to know if there's missing data. Because you could have you know, January, February, March, uh, May, June, July, and you know what, April's missing. So it needs to know to fill in a record for um, for April. Um, also, another thing I want to do is I want to extend the values into the future, and we'll go 24 months into the future. So we'll forecast 24 months. Once we do that, we hit run, and now it's running through a bunch of, it's using Box Jenkins methodology, um, developing very sophisticated time series models, picking up seasonality patterns, picking up trends, you know, all the different things that you would do in a Box Jenkins, if you're familiar with that, time series modeling approach. But it's doing it all behind the scenes. It's doing it all automatically. And so while it's clicking through that, um, are there any questions?
All right, so when it's done, it gives us our golden nugget, and um, we can drill into that just to see what model it built. And it won't spend a lot of time with us, but uh, it built an ARIMA model, and these are the, uh, you know, with one difference in one um, moving average component, um, and then a seasonal autoregressive moving component, and a seasonal um, moving average uh, component. And then here's the variables. And you can see that it did not use the industrial production. It wasn't relevant, so it just automatically got raw steel production as a uh, as a transfer in your transfer function. All right, so let's connect this up and bada boom, bada bing. This is my favorite way to evaluate time series models is to look at the actual time plots. So look at the predictable predicted in the actual. All right, so the circles here are the predicted, excuse me, the actual, and the, the line is the uh, predicted, and the gray area is the confidence interval. And here we have a forecast going out through twenty, through the end of twenty, you know, through you know, twenty nineteen. You see, you're picking up that seasonal pattern, whatever it is. It looks like production drops kind of the same time every year. Um, I think there were a bunch of tariffs that were instituted around here. Or was that back here? I think, I don't know. There was, at some point, maybe it was here. Um, but, you know, there should, I don't remember the history of it. Actually, this is from the economic collapse of 2008. And there was a time in the 2000s, probably around here, when the Bush administration uh, lifted a bunch of tariffs against to save the seal industry. Um, that would probably would have been around here. But, but anyway, you get the idea. And, and all this was done, and you saw how much modeling or how much I had to know about what was going on under the scenes. I mean, it's kind of a nice to know, um, but it does a pretty good job. And we can look at a more granular view. Um, that was the whole series. This is just since 2013. So again, you can see that um, it's doing a pretty good job of capturing the variation in sales. So we could use this to, you know, plan how much steel to make, uh, use this to report to investors what we think is going to happen. And it's all science-based. It's, you know, it's based on actual statistics, not 